It's our story. Stephen Brown, Louisville, Kentucky. So Ed had polio when he was a teenager. And before he had polio, he was actually a very active, athletic um, person. He was on the football team. He, sports were his interest. In fact, his mom, Zona, talked about how when he was really young, you know, like two or three years old, he used to run everywhere. He didn't walk. He ran everywhere. So he got polio when he was um, 14, and he was in the hospital for two years, I think. That might be wrong. It might have been one year. But it was, you know, it was away from school for quite a while. And when he went back to school, the first, um, the first year or so, he actually communicated both with his classmates and from the teachers and classmates with the phone system. So today, you know, we, do video, we could do videos and internet and all this kind of stuff, but they didn't have that in those days. So it was actually a fairly new, it might have even not been fairly, but new, period, new system that the telephone company implemented. And so Ed would listen um, via the phone system to what the teachers and his classmates were saying. And if he wanted to contribute, he could, um, he could do that by pressing some kind of button and he could talk on the phone. His last year, his senior year, was when he went back. And I think he went once a week to school. So he's obviously older than most of his classmates because he missed a couple of years when he had polio and he's getting ready to graduate. And all of a sudden, he hears that he can't graduate because he didn't have PE classes and he didn't have driver's education. So Zona, his mom, just went ballistic. And I think it's, it's probably really important um, in Ed's story to talk about him, how influential Zona was. Um, Zona actually had an interesting life in her own right before she met Ed and before she, Ed was born. And Ed was her, her oldest child. Um, but she really um, made an effort, and the whole family made an effort, to see that Ed was as integrated into the family and into the community as he possibly could be, given the times they were in and the severity of his disability. And so he was um, a post-polio quadriplegic who s slept in an iron lung at night and used a respirator to breathe during the day. and he at that time didn't use a motorized wheelchair, he used a, a manual wheelchair. Um, and the, for some reason there was a requirement that everybody who was going to graduate from this high school had to have both PE and driver's ed, which Ed of course didn't have either one. And so he was, he was told that he wouldn't be able to graduate and as I said Zona just got really angry about that and um, Ed was told by, I think, his counselor. He, the counselor said something to him, well, I think it was the counselor, but whoever it was said something to him like, um, well, you wouldn't want a tainted degree, would you? <laughs> and uh, of course, he didn't care. He wanted the degree. He wanted to get out of there and, and move on to the next step in his life. So Zona um, had been involved in, in um, a lot of different community kinds of activities. And she called the superintendent of the school board and she called other parents and they were getting ready to essentially foment a, a rebellion with the school and I don't have all the details of it but the school backed down. And so what's really important about that in the experience of Ed then, then and later becoming an advocate and using anger is that he later said that watching Zona in this experience really taught him a lot about how to not take no for an answer and that you had to fight for things. Um, so, you know, he would sometimes talk about that when he talked about using anger as, as um, fuel for the fire of change. The It's Our Story Project is a national effort to make disability history public and accessible. Visit us at www.itsourstory.org or on the It's Our Story Project YouTube channel.